Hey there and welcome to another Curtis Stage video tutorial. Today's tutorial is on web fonts and we're going to use Google web fonts in Dreamweaver CC. So what are web fonts? Why should we use them? So essentially what happened was in the past of course is when you were building a website you were limited to the text font choices that were on uh, that basically were on the user end computer and your computer they were made up of the most common typefaces found on most machines so you were limited to Arial and serif and you know some basic fonts times new roman that could be found all over the world on any computer well now we have a new way to uh, embed fonts on a site so with css3 browsers started supporting a new way uh, to bring fonts in from the outside and that was called the at font face and that served up custom fonts to a web page and so services started uh, you know kind of developing one of them was Adobe type kit which we're gonna look at in here in a second the other one and the other one is the edge web fonts built in directly to Dreamweaver CC which is pretty cool but that's gonna be another tutorial uh, what we're gonna talk about though is the Google web fonts library which is free and it's really easy to use so why wouldn't you use typekit so let me just let's look over here at the web browser typekit uh, which is Adobe product is great um, you can use it professionally and spend money per year and have really an amazing amount of fonts uh, you can see that in this portfolio area 4200 plus fonts uh, on a website unlimited amount of websites that you can use those fonts so essentially you're licensing the font through Typekit. It's a pretty good deal, $50 a year, especially if you build a lot of websites per year. Desktop fonts, uh, you can use them in projects. So this is pretty good. Um, so that's a lot of fonts, but it's also a little pricey. Some people don't want to pay that, that money. So this is where Google Fonts comes in. It's really easy to utilize. Before we look at that web interface on that, let's open up Dreamweaver and I just want to show you just a little bit about what I'm talking about here. So if I'm in Dreamweaver and here we are in a page, you'll notice that I'm in Live View. Here's, here's non-Live View in Dreamweaver and it will not show you the Google web fonts in this, in this setting. So you have to go to Live View or view it on the uh, web and this will show you that I've got a web font here and a web font here. These are embedded on this from the Google server. So they're not actually on your server. Dreamweaver's pulling the code is being pulled from Google server and serving up to the browser that your viewer is on. And they don't have to have that font, in other words. So your viewer would probably not have this font, which is called the Olio script. They're not going to have that on their computer. And that's okay because live, while the browser is, is um, open for the viewer, it will pull in that font. So let's take a look at how that gets done. First thing is, let's go to the Google Fonts website. So here we are at google.com slash fonts, and you're going to see that they have a little interface here that tells you uh, the different kinds of fonts. You can see that, that right now, currently, and this is growing, there's 651 fonts, uh, font families that are available. So that's pretty good, and these are all free to use. Now what I like about this is you can search in different categories. I'm just going to have them all checked right now. You can search on different styles here, thickness, or you know, so if you want a thicker font or a th thin font, so there's a way to search through here. Um, you can decide if you want your font italicized or not, so slanted or not slanted. So there's a lot of choices here in these these little filters, which is really nice. So what I like to do is they give you a sentence here. You can look at it in, in you know, four different tabs. Word, a singular word, a sentence, or a paragraph to kind of see what this font looks like. So what I like to do is look through the different fonts. And you can change your size right here so you can kind of see what it looks like. And you can see how you can sort by popularity and what whatnot. So if you want to look for through all the fonts they have, you can just kind of scroll through here and see what fonts. I like to, I like to look in sentence view. It kind of gives me a better angle. Poster view, they're pretty big, so you can look through that. So let's say there's a font that you like, so I'm going to say Pacifico. I can add this to my collection. You'll see that the collection gets put down here at the bottom. Let me add another one here. 
So we just have a couple. So I'm going to add, uh, here's that Olio that I had before, so I'm going to add that one. And then maybe one more just to kind of, so we can get this, so we can really see how this works. So I'm going to do one that's, that's straight. And how about Railway? I like this one. So I'm going to add that to my collection. Now that I have three in my collection, I can use, there's, there's three buttons down here. Choose, Review. So Review just kind of shows you what you, what you selected. And then I can go to Use. And this is where we'll implement this. So number one is basically your page load and, and, and which, which kind of styles you want for these fonts. So you can see all those. So if the font has them, Pacifico does not. But Railway, you can see, has a bunch of different possibilities. The second step is, do you just want Latin or Latin Extended? Most of us just want to keep that. And the third step is, is where we really need to pay attention here. I'm going to highlight this. This actually, this whole line here, is going to end up going back into Dreamweaver. So Command-C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this and go into Dreamweaver. I have a new page here. And you can see I'm getting, this is just kind of a standard little template layout. I'm going to go to code view. I'm going to paste that code right up here in my head tags. So I'm going to put that right below, uh, below this, um, my style sheet, right above the closing head tag. So I'm going to put this right here and command V paste. So that's, you can see that it is doing an absolute link out to Google's server and it's looking for those three fonts that I had selected. Okay, so that's, that's the first step. Now let's go back to our Google Fonts. Here's how we would integrate them within the page. So what I like to do, and this shows you an example, we don't really need that, what I like to do is I wanna highlight these. Now, it'd be great if I could highlight all of these at once. For some reason, you can only highlight one at a time. I have no idea why, so I'm gonna Command C, and then I'm going to paste this. I'm going to go to my CSS. So I have an external CSS sheet. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and add, add some space here. And I'm going to put these here just for right now. I'm not doing anything with them yet. I'm just going to put them right in there. Hold on one sec. Let me get this over here. And you'll see that what will happen is, is I'll comment these out so I can go in uh, then use them within my paragraphs or heading tags or whatever. So I'm going to command V, paste, and get my last one, railway. So I'm basically just copying from the Google site right now and pasting onto here. Now I want to I want to comment these out because obviously I can't just leave that like that in CSS. It'll mess up my script. So I'm going to go over here and apply my comments so I have those available to me when I create when I use them in the CSS. Okay, so now what I want to do is now that I have these in here, I want to actually create some selectors with these, with these font families in them. So let's just make one up. I'm going to make a class here. Uh, this will be, I'll just keep it simple and call it Google Font. You can name this whatever you want. I'll call this Google Font uh, 1, so I have three of them. And give myself my curly brackets, my braces here. So this is my declaration. And then I'm going to give it my font family. So I'm going to do font-family. Now I can start typing this, or I could just use what I did right up here. I could just take these right out of my notes that I gave myself and put that first Olio script right there. And there I go. I got that one. So now what I can do is I can apply this to any font that I have on my site. So if I highlight right over here and... I can do that over in source code and apply that class there. I could do it right in the properties panel, which is pretty easy. I can go to window properties and apply that class. There it is showing, because I've made it here, right here. It's going to show up in my properties panel right here. And you'll see that it won't show up, of course, in just regular straight design view. But as soon as I go to live view, then there we go. There's my Google web font. Let's put, the, let's put another one in there just to kind of, so we can see how this works. I'm going to go here and create another selector. So I'm going to say, so another class. So Google font two curly braces. And then I'm going to do my second font family, which is Pacifico. I'm going to highlight this. I like to put these here as notes. You can see that it's easy. Then I just got them to kind of put in here for later use. And now that I have this, I want to save. 
And when I go back over to Design View, I can highlight this next one right here and add that class on there, Google Font 2. And there we go, since I'm in Live View, you can see that change. And if I apply that even to a paragraph tag, so here's a paragraph, I just highlight it, and I can add that class right there, and now all that's changed. Pretty cool. I can even add in the new CC, you can see right here, I can add the class right there. And if I start typing in, if I know the name of it, so check that out, I know the name of it, so Google, and there's my, there's my list, and I could say, oh, I'd like that to be Google Font 1, and there I go, I've got Google Font 1, Google Font 2, whatever, I can get rid of that one and add that one. So that's a new way, let me do that once again, I'll do that right up here. I'm gonna highlight this, instead of going to the Properties panel, I can go right here, this is a new Creative Cloud, gives me a little, little spot here where I can add a class, and if I know the name of it, which I do, I just start typing it in. Look at there's my two choices. It's really nice. Then it just automatically goes there. And likewise, I can go right over here to the CSS Designer and go to the Properties area here, and I can also pick my font family there. Now, this is font families that are on my computer, right? Now, let me just talk about font families because we briefly, I briefly had mentioned to you that Adobe. Um, you know, has Typekit, but it also has the Edge web fonts that are built in to the Creative Cloud. Let me show you where those are. If I go right here, you can see that I've got this list, and here's one of them right here, Able. And I can go to Manage Fonts, and when I do that, I get this dialog box that pops up, and here's all the possible fonts that I can use. Some of them are Google fonts, some of them are Typekit fonts that are free, and these are free to use, so it's kind of like a Typekit light. Uh, it doesn't have 4,000 fonts. It has a few hundred of them for free. And it has some of these Google Web fonts as well. So in our next tutorial, we'll talk about this Adobe Edge fonts built right in to the Creative Cloud. All right. So hopefully this has been a helpful tutorial. And once again, uh, I'm Curtis Stage, and we'll see you next time.